this video, these two supplements can actually repair the microvessel damage inside the kidney that causes proteinuria. But why is no one doing this already? Is this combination of supplements too powerful for people with kidney disease? Catherine here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and a researcher in the field of kidney health. This is why I firmly believe that the very first line of treatment for kidney disease should be a natural one. It's no secret that kidney disease can be stopped and even reversed in all the stages. What they never tell you about this is that there is an inverse correlation between the amount of prescription drugs you take and the amount of improvement in GFR number you will be able to achieve. So, as we can see, the less the amount of medications you need, the more the chances you are going to be able to improve. This is why today I will focus on what really works naturally for proteinuria. Proteinuria, also known as albuminuria, is a key marker for kidney health. It actually predicts if you are going to get a better or worse kidney function at your next scheduled checkup. But when it comes to proteinuria, it doesn't really matter if you are looking at it as your first symptom of kidney damage, maybe in combination with foam in your urine or if you are in the advanced stages of kidney disease. All that it matters is that you can beat it naturally. And this combination of supplements can really help. But why are natural solutions like this one so underrated and underprescribed in patients with CKD? Are they too powerful for your kidneys? Let's find out. So part of my job is researching not just how natural supplements and plant compounds work in the body, but also how they interact with each other. Because you see, sometimes combining two, three or more different supplements will give you a result that's order of magnitude more effective than what you would have got from just one initial part alone. I mean, we have seen this with the diet several times. Green tea is an example. It's only healthy if you drink it with a source of vitamin C such as lemon juice. Otherwise, you are not getting any antioxidants from it. Same for fat-soluble vitamins such as vitamin D. Vitamin D is not going to be absorbed by the body if taken without a source of fat, so right? Yeah, this is how the human body works. This is also why natural medicine is not just finding out what natural compounds work. We also need to find out how to combine these compounds together. And in my search for the perfect natural treatment for kidney disease, I've stumbled upon a few incredibly powerful combinations of certain natural herbs and supplements. And guys, I'm completely baffled by the fact that the combination of natural supplements I will be showing you today is not a first-line treatment for everyone, especially people with diabetes or high proteinuria levels. Now guys, I will show you how to use this extremely powerful combination in the next part of the video. Before that, I also want to share with you what foods to eat and what to avoid in order to lower your proteinuria levels significantly and kickstart your kidneys into repair mode. So question, what should you eat in order to improve your proteinuria levels? In the treatment for CKD, the diet always come first and supplement comes second. There is no improving without a well-planned renal diet. That said, when it comes to proteinuria, there are some foods that have been directly linked to better proteinuria levels in CKD patients. Let's see what they are. First of all, soybeans. Soybeans are commonly consumed in Asia in several different forms, including tofu. You can easily find soybeans either dried, canned, or even fresh as edamame. 
And what makes them interesting for us is the fact that their consumption has been linked to significant improvements in both proteinuria and creatinine levels in people with diabetes. And this is amazing. I mean, this is a simple food you can just eat to be able to see an improvement in proteinuria and creatinine levels, says science. And guys, if you think this info is useful, consider sharing this video with a friend and giving it a like, all right? Let's get more people to see this useful stuff. But how is it even possible that a single food item can do all that? Well, soybeans are somehow exceptional in the world of nutrition. First of all, soybeans have the health benefits of other legumes. They're rich in iron, fiber, and boasts anti-inflammatory benefits. But what's really exceptional about soybean is the unique amino acid profile they have. You see, soybeans are one of the very few plant-based sources of protein that is also a complete protein. Very important because eating these beans will cause way fewer waste products than any other plant-based foods. And this is how you protect your kidneys. Now let's take a look at another food with significant benefits on proteinuria and kidney health. This is ginger. Ginger is a must in any renal diet and I recommend it to everyone with kidney disease. Why you may ask? Because science is linking ginger to a plethora of health benefits. It can help improving insulin sensitivity, it helps with cholesterol levels, and according to recent research, ginger is also linked to lowered proteinuria levels. Amazing what a little root can do. Now let's talk about another food that has some incredible properties against proteinuria, flaxseed. This small seed is truly incredible. Flaxseed is rich in fiber, alpha-linolenic acid, and lignans, a type of polyphenols with antioxidant properties. It's thanks to these nutrients that flaxseed can lower your blood pressure. It can also help with sugar levels and cholesterol. And what's more incredible is that, in a study on people suffering from lupus nephritis, those eating flaxseed every day for just four weeks were able to lower their protein levels significantly, as well as their creatinine levels. Now, lupus nephritis is a type of inflammatory kidney disease, and flaxseed reduces the inflammation. This is why researchers believe that all kidney patients may benefit from the property of flaxseed. And guys, if you want to learn more about how to eat to improve your GFR numbers with the diet, I recently made a video with a lot of foods with incredible properties. It's up here and also down in the description if you missed it. But there is another reason why flaxseed is so good for kidney health. They're one of the best sources of a nutrient that's known to reduce proteinuria and that also slows down kidney disease progression which is omega-3 fatty acids. While you can get some omega-3s from seeds, such as flaxseed and chia seeds, omega-3s is one of the few things I really consider essential to supplement for people with kidney disease. And look, I don't consider many supplements essential, but there are a few things that you absolutely want to take. Everyone should be supplementing a multivitamin, so magnesium, a fiber supplement, and well, omega-3s. I would especially recommend omega-3s if proteinuria is also present. Why you may ask? Well, because, and I am quoting a scientific paper published on the clinic's journal here, omega-3 fatty acid supplementation is associated with a significantly reduced risk of end-stage renal disease and delays the progression of this disease. So less dialysis risk, slower CKD progression, yeah, that's what science says about omega-3s and kidney disease. And research also pointed out that supplementing omega-3s was associated with a lower risk of proteinuria. So really, no reason not to take a supplement of omega-3s. As we can see here, a dose of 1000 mg a day of combined EPA and DHA is a good starting point for anyone with higher doses being reserved to the treatment of specific conditions. And speaking of essential nutrients for kidney health, there is one more supplement that everyone should be taking, especially if proteinuria is also present. Vitamin D. 
Now this is a vitamin that can significantly help with kidney health. Low vitamin D levels have been linked to fatigue, frequent infections, bone problems, a dozen other nasty problems. And getting vitamin D levels back to normal can help fight diabetes, lower hypertension, and it also protects the kidneys. And that's really important since most kidney disease patients have too low levels for this vitamin. Now the biggest effect vitamin D seems to have is lowered proteinuria levels. In particular, what a recent study found out is that supplementing a special prescription form of vitamin D could give you very effective results with proteinuria. Reductions of up to 34% were observed and that's incredible. Vitamin D really is the kidney vitamin and if you start taking vitamin D and you also add the combination of supplements I will be showing you next, well, it will actually be possible to cut your protein real level in half as my thumbnail suggests. Probably a too powerful combination of supplements, there is one more question that needs an answer. This is a question I got asked from you guys last time I talked about proteinuria. So question, do we need to eat less protein for proteinuria? And what if we have diabetes? So let's circle back to the diet for a moment before I'll show you my supplements. While one may think that reducing dietary protein intake has a direct effect on proteinuria, I mean less protein in, less protein out, right? Things are a little bit more complicated than that. Because you see, certain proteins, albumin to be more accurate, are supposed to be in your blood, right? And CKD patients tend to have too little albumin in blood, actually, not too much. So why worry about this protein then? Because we also know that problems start to arise when this albumin is found in your urine. Having albumin in your urine means that the tiny filters inside your kidneys are not working properly. So ideally we'd want more of this protein in blood and less in urine. How to achieve that with the diet? Well, of course, by following a plant-based low protein diet. This is the intervention that gives you the best results in terms of proteinuria. In fact, and I'm quoting the literature here, the most recent meta-analysis demonstrated that the principal target of an LPD was not the improvement of glomerular filtration rate or GFR in short, but the reduction in proteinuria. So you start limiting protein intake and as a consequence, your protein in urine is also going to decrease, but the amount of protein in your blood improves. This is only possible because this diet actually decreases the amount of damage your kidneys are taking. And this is why people with kidney disease are supposed to follow a low protein diet, alright? Okay, but why about diabetes, you may ask? Should we also decrease protein intake with diabetes? Now guys, when it comes to diabetes, things get more complicated because, well, if you have diabetes, your kidneys are not any different from those of a person without diabetes, right? Protein metabolism will still damage them and it will still cause proteinuria. But while someone without diabetes can eat almost all of their calories from carbs and fats only, well, if you have diabetes, you also need to limit carb intake. So a non-diabetic CKD patient may eat as close to zero protein a day as possible and take a supplement of special amino acids to avoid malnutrition. But on the other hand, a diabetic needs a different strategy. What to do then? Your dietary plan to fight protein and diabetes should be a two-step program. First of all, you still need to cut most of the protein from your diet. I mean, this is always needed if you don't want to end up in dialysis. But as I was saying, you still want to keep enough protein not to need to rely too much on carbs. But we are still talking about low protein here, alright? Now the second step here is making sure all your protein is coming from plant-based sources only. This is very important. With diabetes, you need not just to limit protein intake, but also to replace all the animal-based protein you may still be eating with plant-based protein, alright? 
Why, you may ask? To answer this question, I will directly quote the most recent scientific literature. As we can read, switching animal proteins to vegetable proteins may decrease renal hyperfiltration, proteinuria, and ideally, in the long term, the risk of developing or worsening renal failure. Now, this is a very complete review. They have also made a graphic to show you the mechanistic model of how this will reduce your proteinuria. I won't go too much in depth about this, but the way this works is pretty simple. Plant-based protein creates less waste product than animal-based protein, and this reduces renal hyperfiltration, which is a way to say that the kidneys have to work less, and they will last longer. So, in short, if you do not have diabetes, cut all the protein you can from your diet. Get prescribed a supplement to avoid malnutrition and only eat low protein or apartheid foods. If you have diabetes, aim for a little bit more protein but only from plant-based foods. And guys, always keep in mind that these kind of dietary interventions need to be done with the help of a renal dietitian, alright? Okay guys, I've kept the best for last. This is an incredibly powerful combination of supplements that will give you huge results in terms of improved proteinuria levels. It's not impossible to cut your proteinuria in half with this. But while the effects of these supplements are incredible, you also need to follow the other steps I have described in today's video, especially those about the diet. So how do you make this combination? First thing you want is astragalus. This root has been used for thousands of years for its impressive benefits on kidney health. Today, astragalus is still widely prescribed in many Asian countries to people with CKD because it can lower blood pressure and improve heart health. And it can lower proteinuria as well while restoring kidney function in all the stages of kidney disease. And while you can use the root itself to make tea, it's probably easier to just get the powder. Many supplement stores carry astragalus capsules and it should be pretty easy to find. Ideal dose for astragalus powder is 2-4 to four grams per day. But as I was saying, to get the best kidney repair benefits possible from this treatment, you also want to add another natural supplement. Astragalus has tremendous properties you can unleash by combining it with curcumin. As we can see, when you add curcumin to astragalus, you will start to repair the microvessels inside the organs in your body. Now, this combination is going to be extremely powerful not just for proteinuria but for diabetes as well. As we can see, astragalus and curcumin, when taken together, are also able to reduce the beta cell damage. Now, beta cells are the cells inside your pancreas, the cells that actually make insulin. It's clear that you can have huge benefits from this combination of supplements. Now, when it comes to curcumin, which also offers huge kidney protecting benefits by itself, you want to take at least 500 milligrams of curcumin per day with piperin to make it bioavailable. And guys, if you want to know more about how to improve your GFR numbers naturally, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.